When it comes to minivans, no one knows more than Daimler Chrysler. Ever since the first models were introduced in 1983, the company has continuously refined and improved its designs to better meet customers' needs. That's why the company sells almost 700,000 minivans around the world each year. Now, Daimler Chrysler is using this popular and practical vehicle to explore alternative sources of power that are more environmentally friendly. The result is the Epic, the world's only five-passenger production electric minivan. Welcome to this presentation about Daimler Chrysler's Epic Minivan. In the next few minutes, we'll give you an overview of how it works and what you need to know in order to operate it. As you'll see, the Epic operates just like a conventional vehicle in most ways. We'll focus our attention on how the Epic is different from a conventional minivan. But before we get to that, let's take a moment to show you what the Epic is. EPIC stands for Electric Powered Interurban Commuter. EPIC combines clean, quiet electric drive technology with the utility of a minivan. Raise the hood and you'll see the EPIC's traction motor, which drives the front wheels. The motor operates on alternating current. The familiar looking 12 volt battery found under the hood is used to power the vehicle's accessories. Energy for the Epic's traction motor is stored in a nickel metal hydride battery pack located under the floor of the vehicle. The pack consists of 14 24 volt modules. The pack bolts into place and should not require maintenance under normal use. The battery pack is recharged through the EV inlet or charge port, which is located where you would normally find a fuel nozzle. The charging station resembles a conventional fuel pump with a cable that plugs into the EV inlet. It typically requires five to eight hours to fully charge the EPIC's batteries, which provide it with a range of 80 to 90 miles. EPIC can reach a top speed of 80 miles per hour. Now let's see what you need to know to operate the EPIC. The EPIC's instrument cluster looks very similar to one on a conventional vehicle. And while the gauges themselves are different, the types of information they display are also similar to those found on a conventional vehicle. The large gauge to the left of the speedometer is the power meter. It indicates how much power you are consuming relative to the amount of power remaining in the battery pack. As with a tachometer, you'll see the needle rise as you press down on the accelerator pedal. But because it shows the relative amount of power you're using, you'll find that as the amount of available power decreases, the needle will move higher. For example, during a certain type of driving, when the battery is fully charged, the power meter might show that you're using 15%. But if the battery is low on charge, the exact same driving might show that you're using 40%. To the left of the power meter is a smaller battery temperature gauge, which indicates battery coolant temperature. If the needle ever gets near the hot mark, a chime will sound five times to alert you. And if it ever reaches the hot mark, the chime will sound continuously. Vehicle performance may be affected if the batteries become too hot, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. At the right of the cluster is the battery state of charge gauge, which shows the amount of energy remaining in the batteries, with L for low and F for full, just like a typical fuel gauge. Directly below it is a low state of charge warning light, which looks like a battery. The light appears and a chime will sound once the state of charge falls below 25%. If this happens, you should charge the vehicle as soon as possible. Next to the low state of charge light is the power limit warning light. It will turn on if the battery temperature is too high or too low, if the powertrain is too hot, or if the battery state of charge is too low. The vehicle will automatically adjust its performance to help protect itself from damage. If this happens, you may find that the Epic won't accelerate as quickly as usual, and your top speed may be limited. 
These are both measures to help you drive the Epic to a suitable location. After you recharge the batteries, vehicle performance should return to normal. At the far left of the cluster is the auxiliary battery charge system light. If this light stays on after you start the vehicle or comes on when you are driving, it indicates a possible concern with the 12 volt auxiliary battery. Have the vehicle serviced as soon as possible. Inside the transmission range indicator is a small ready light located under the park symbol. When the ready light appears, that indicates that the vehicle is operational. You can shift into drive and go. You'll need this light because you won't hear a combustion engine running as you would with a normal vehicle. Directly above the instrument cluster is the information center which contains three lights that are unique to this vehicle. The wait light may appear when you start the vehicle. Simply leave the ignition key in the run position and wait for a few seconds for the light to go out. The service required light is self-explanatory. There's been a possible malfunction and the vehicle should be checked by a qualified technician. The check plug light and the accompanying chime tells you that the door protecting the EV inlet is open. The vehicle will not go into ready mode until you close the inlet door. When it comes to starting and driving the Epic, you'll find that it's very much like a conventional vehicle. To start it, simply insert the ignition key and turn it to the start position, then release the key. Once the ready light appears, step on the brake, release the parking brake, and shift into gear and go. Notice that there are no low gear ranges, just park, reverse, neutral, and drive. When you park the Epic, always move the shifter into the park position and set the parking brake. Now what should you do if the Epic doesn't start? Well, there are several things you can check. If the check plug light is on, it means that the EV inlet door has been left open. Close the charge plug door and try again. It should start normally this time. If the wait light appears, you've interrupted the vehicle's charging process near its end. Simply wait a moment for the light to go out before trying to start the vehicle. Another possibility is that the Epix impact switch has been activated. This is a mechanical switch located under the hood that's designed to detect if the Epic has hit or been hit by another vehicle or obstacle. If this happens, the switch cuts off the electric power supply for safety. If you think the impact switch has been triggered by someone accidentally tapping the vehicle at low speed, for example, you can reset it. The impact switch is located below the 12 volt battery on the left frame rail. There's a red rubber protective cover on the top. Press down on the red cover to reset the switch. If the impact switch was the cause, resetting it should allow you to start the vehicle. There's one other possible reason why the Epic won't start. The service disconnect switch has been turned off. The service disconnect is designed to protect technicians from an electric shock while they work on the vehicle by disconnecting the power supply. The service disconnect has a red handle and is located beneath the front passenger door. The red handle must point to the rear for the vehicle to operate. When the red handle points forward, it's off. This lockout device, normally stored in the glove box, is used to ensure the switch remains in the off position during service. So if the Epic won't start, check the service disconnect and make sure it's on with the red handle pointing toward the rear. And if the Epic is ever in an accident that disables the vehicle, move the service disconnect switch to the off position pointing forward to prevent the possibility of a fatal shock hazard. The controls for the Epic's heater and air conditioning systems are almost identical to those on a conventional vehicle. It has a knob to adjust the fan speed and another to select the desired mode. There's a sliding lever to adjust the temperature. The snowflake button turns the air conditioning on or off. Two other buttons allow you to choose between fresh and recirculated air. And buttons for the rear window wiper, washer and defroster are located just to the left of the climate controls. While the systems look like and work like what you'll find on a conventional vehicle, behind the scenes they operate differently. The only reason we mention this 
is that using the heater or air conditioning can reduce the Epic's performance and or its driving range. The Epic drives just like a conventional minivan. The sounds may vary from what you're used to and you won't feel any shifting because the Epic doesn't use gears. The biggest difference is that you'll want to pay greater attention to how much power you use because you can't just pull over into any gas station to refuel. To maximize your range, you'll want to drive the Epic as you would any conventional vehicle in ways to maximize fuel economy. That means no quick jackrabbit starts where you press down hard on the accelerator. Instead, accelerate gently and allow the vehicle to reach your desired speed. When you can foresee that you'll have to stop, lift off the accelerator pedal well ahead of time and allow the vehicle to coast before it's time to stop. As traction battery temperature falls below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, Epic's power and range will decrease. If battery temperature ever reaches zero degrees Fahrenheit, you cannot drive the Epic. To avoid these problems, park the Epic in a heated area any time that outside temperatures are likely to reach 40 degrees or below for an extended period. Also recognize that on cold days, the Epic's range will likely decrease. That's not only because you lose battery capacity in cold weather, but also because you're using the heater, the froster and headlights and so on. All of these functions consume power that would otherwise be used for moving the vehicle. Likewise, in hot, humid weather, using the air conditioner will also reduce the Epic's range. Now we come to perhaps the biggest difference between the Epic and conventional vehicles, recharging the batteries. Even this procedure resembles the refueling process that you're already familiar with, it just takes longer. This special charging station, built by Lockheed Martin, is required to recharge the Epic's batteries. The station plugs into the vehicle through a conductive EV connector. This design was chosen because of the safety and convenience that it provides. To recharge the Epic's batteries, park the vehicle near the charging station and shut it off. Open the EV inlet, where you'd normally find the fuel filler tube, and remove the protective cap. Insert the charging station's EV connector into the exposed charge port. After about 10 seconds, the charging should start automatically. The front left turn signal will switch on to indicate charging is in progress and it will stay lit until the process is complete. Your organization may have programmed the charger to work only during off-peak hours to reduce electricity costs. If so, the charger will not start until the programmed time. While the vehicle is charging, you'll hear its coolant pump and refrigeration system operate, along with the battery pack fan. This is normal. It'll typically require about five to eight hours to fully charge the Epic's batteries. This will vary depending on what type of electrical service you have. Or if you're using this special 90 kilowatt fast charger, it'll only take about 30 minutes. If necessary, you can interrupt a charge by pressing stop on the charger. You can restart it by either pressing the Charge Now button on the charger or by pulling the trigger on the connector handle. Once the front turn signal goes out, you know that charging is complete. Remove the charge connector and replace it on the charging station. Then replace the connector cap and close the inlet door. The Epic is ready to go. Daimler Chrysler is proud to offer the Epic as an alternative transportation resource and as a research tool for the effectiveness of these vehicles. We hope you enjoy driving it.